Hey coach, we talked to you earlier in the week and you kind of talked about a, a little bit of your leadership and, and player driven leadership. So when did you, was there a season where you felt like you could kind of hand over some of the leadership responsibilities to some of those veterans after you knew the culture was in place in Buffalo? Yeah, I would say Matty, probably uh, the middle of the 2020 season, uh, you know, with the pandemic and everything, I felt like that was, you know, probably the st- the start of it more than anything, but I think it's kind of resets every year a little bit until you, I think it's earned, right? That that's a, that's an earned uh, responsibility. And, and uh, uh, I think every year you wait and see in training camp, how the leaders are going to take ownership of the team, uh, you know, by word and deed and, and by example. So when they do that, then you can hand it back every year at, at a certain point. And with how those players have earned that leadership and, and the right to to be in some of those decision making conversations this season, how proud have you been of of the leaders in this locker room this year? Yeah, I've been uh, just tremendously um, proud, appreciative uh, of those guys. Uh, you know, led by Josh, and, and it's been fun to watch Vaughn come into that mix as well and add his level of influence on our team, uh, on our leadership group. And uh, it's just been, it's been, it's been a joy to watch really and, and uh, very grateful for it. Thanks coach. Sure. Hi, Sean. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to Tyrell yesterday and he had mentioned how much respect he has for the Dolphins special teams units. And I was curious when you're going up against a really good team like this on both sides of the ball, and then you add in that special teams element, how much more challenging, obviously it is, but what, what kind of does the details of preparing for a team when they're really good in all three phases? Yeah, you kind of broke up a little bit there, Matt, but uh, I think just overall, you want to play complementary football, right? You want to play a, a complete game in all three phases. Um, you know, I really feel like their special teams units have been a challenge for us um, in the first two games that we faced and played them in this year. Um, you know, they're skilled, they're fast across the board on their football team. They have great team speed. Um, so we'll have to obviously be ready to go this weekend. And then you guys signed uh, Cole Beasley to the active roster. Uh, what went into that decision and what have you seen from Cole since he's rejoined the team? Yeah. Um, you know, it's been, it's been good to have him through the last couple of weeks since he got here and, um, you know, to, for him to get his legs underneath of him again and, um, get back into into the flow and into the rhythm. And I think he's, I think he's off to a good start. Thanks, Sean. <coughs> sure. Hey coach, I know no one's healthy at this, you know, 100% healthy at this point in the year, but what has it meant for the defense for Jordan Poyer to, to play through the amount of injuries that, that he's had to deal with this season and just your, your record with him on the field? Yeah. Um, he's done a really nice job. Um, he's, you know, he's, he is so tough. Uh, I just have so much respect for who he is as a person, who he is as a player. Um, <clears throat> obviously, he brings a certain mentality to our defense, and, and, it's, and it's been uh, great to have him out there. And then you're, you're facing Miami for the third time, kind of similar to last year, playing the Patriots three times. But how hard, difficult is it to win, you know, to beat an opponent in your division multiple times in a season? Yeah. Um, you know, they've beaten us once and we've beaten them once. Um, so, you know, here we are in game three. And I think, uh, you know, what, what it comes down to is is uh, our focus and, and our level of execution. They're a good, really good football team, well coached. And uh, um, like I said before, they've got great team speed. So uh, it's important that, uh, you know, again, we, we prepare like we need to prepare and stay with our process. Thank you. <coughs> Coach, good morning. Mookie Harkins, Wolf Sports Cincinnati. How you doing? Good, Mookie. How are you? I'm good. Thank God it's Friday, right? <laughs> so, Coach, uh, just just tell us what has the mood been like, uh, you know, this week overall for practice with you guys? Yeah, I mean, they're, I would say, pretty, pretty much, um, you know, a normal week for us of preparation and a normal focus. Um, you know, we'll go out there in a few minutes here to practice on our, our Friday and and uh, continue trying to add detail to, to the game plan. 
Yeah, I, I kind of jumped in late, but um, how do you prepare to face number 10? Uh, he's a weapon that Miami uses a lot, whether it's motioning him or maybe even returning punts. He's done that in the past against you guys. Or are you prepared to him even lining up in the backfield? Yeah, they do a really good job um, of moving him all around. And um, like I said, they have great team speed, you know, with 10 and 17. And um, so we'll have to, you know, make sure we're on our details and know where our help is and play with good leverage. Absolutely. And uh, you know, it's going to be a crazy atmosphere on Sunday. Uh, what is your message for Bill's Mafia if you got any? <laughs> Just keep being themselves, man. They're, they're, uh, they're the top fan base, top fans in the league. And, um, you know, just keep being them. Absolutely, Coach. Good luck Sunday. Appreciate that. Hey, Sean, I just had one more quick one. I was talking to Naheem this week also. And, you know, we've talked a lot about what he did last week. But I'm interested from a personal perspective. I mean, just the what he's kind of gone through to get up to speed. He said that some of his stuff still hasn't arrived from Indianapolis. And he's been trying to learn the playbook. And, you know, he's acclimated so well in the locker room. What have been your impressions of him personally? Uh, just very impressed with who he is. Uh, he's, he's a little bit on the quieter side, but a, a great young man. Um, just high character guy, it seems like. And um, I think it's I think it's great. It's a great example of someone earning earning the respect of of one's teammates to come in during the middle of a season, um, especially as a veteran player via trade is not easy. Um, and he just took it one day at a time, continued to work at it. Um, he had a lot of things going on, you know, off the field too, like you said, that helped that become challenging to trying to learn the playbook, to try and, you know, endear yourself to your new teammates and coaches. And he just stuck with it. And then uh, what he did this past weekend, uh, obviously not by himself, but what he, what he did, I think really, I hope helped him feel, um, you know, as a true part of the team now uh, in the Buffalo Bills uniform. Hey, Sean. Yeah. Hey, Sean, you've got a couple <clears throat> rookies that are about to play in their first NFL playoff game. And I know some of these guys are no stranger to big games from what they did in college, but is there anything extra that you have to say to some of these guys like Kair or James going into this game with it being their first pro postseason game? Yeah, I mean, I think – Generally, um, no, but, but specifically, yes, if that makes sense. Um, you know, Micah and um, we, we kind of got that out of the way on, on Monday uh, with Micah in, in the leadership role that he's in, um, taking some time with our, with our younger players and, and sharing his wisdom on kind of tips for playing and executing in the playoffs. So I know that was a big help to me and, and I hope to them as well. How... I guess um, beneficial is it that guys like Kair and James have gotten so many reps and so much playing time throughout the regular season going into this game that, you know, it's not like they're just being thrown in there. Like they, they, they've played a lot of reps this season. Well, that's what you, I mean, uh, you know, the, the NFL has changed into a, in some ways, a young, a young players league. Um, it used to be, you know, you get drafted in the, probably anything other than the first round and you're going to sit for a year and maybe be a backup and play special teams. And now it's, um, you're expected to contribute in, in some cases rather early. So, um, I think that all bodes well though for later in the year. And then one more, if I can, I know we talked a little bit about what, how Dean was able to step in last game and start, I guess, just what have you seen from him in this short, period of time since he's he's been back yeah um it's been it's been fun to watch him rekindle some of the at least in person friendships that he's had um even though he's kept those friendships and relationships um uh, to see him reunite in person with um guys that he's been friends with uh, for so long here um and then on the field just you know i applaud him he waited his turn he waited his turn he waited his turn um and, and never got his chin down I'm sure it was, you know, frustrating at some points and, um, and now for him to be able to play, um, I think is a great example of just putting the team first and then being ready when your numbers call. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Yep.